Anyway, real quick, Dr. Stone, the VA Asset and Infrastructure Review Act, AIR, something I strenuously opposed, I think you all know that, creates a commission in 2022 to close down VA facilities across the country. Uh, I'm very supportive of reducing waste and other efficiencies in the VA system, uh, but I've been against uh, Washington cutting vital health care access to veterans, especially in rural areas, in rural areas like my state of West Virginia, which is entirely rural, in, in Appalachia, and fear that that, uh, that that may happen. That's why I introduced a bill with Senator Rounds, also from a very rural state of South Dakota, to eliminate the Air Act Commission. I'm hearing worrying reports of efforts to accelerate the Air Act time line, which is alarming, uh, given that we're in the middle of the pandemic and that would not be the right time to do it. So my question would be, the pandemic has made it clear the vital role of the medical centers, the VA medical centers, to not only for our veterans, but for national stockpile of emergency supplies and responses, in other words, our national security. Do you all see the harm that that might be short-sighted if they would start closing or even going down that pathway? Senator, I am unaware of any effort to um, accelerate the Air Commission, but I do believe that uh, we need a fundamental recapitalization of the VA system. I mentioned uh, previously to Senator Blumenthal that uh, our average age of our facilities is over 50 years. Mm -hmm. We need to be recapitalized. And uh, that includes acknowledging the lessons learned of this pandemic. And the lessons of this pandemic is we are the safety net to this system and we must acknowledge the fact that rural hospitals in America are not stable, are going out of business at unprecedented rates, and we must be that safety net. Therefore, uh, what I thought was a review looking at where veterans truly were um, has expanded now to acknowledge the fact that we will need small facilities in remote areas of this country in order to serve a potential future pandemic as well as to serve America's veterans. This could be either one of, either one of you all could answer this or both of you answer. Uh, Pfizer and Moderna vaccines need to be transported and stored in extremely cold temperatures. I think we're all concerned about how we're going to get them into the most rural areas. Having a state that's entirely rural, my friend from North Carolina, his state is extremely rural in certain areas, and we're thinking that we might not have the facilities to do that and to be able to do that and get the vaccines transported in a safe manner. What precautions and how are you all working with that to make sure that basically when these vaccines are distributed, that we're able to handle those in these rural areas if we don't have the accommodations. So either one, however you, Dr. Stone. So, so um, as I mentioned previously, our, we've uh, sandboxed the entire process to make sure we can handle them safely. Please remember, Senator, that we are in the midst of our influenza vaccine uh, distribution and have given over a million doses of influenza vaccine. So our ability to move these around the system is well tested as part of our pharmacy program. Uh, the difficulty here is refrigeration, and that's what I talked about in the negative 20 and negative 70 degree freezers. Uh, to move these around this morning, uh, before we began here, I had a conversation about our ability to obtain a short runway aircraft to go into rural areas, uh, that we could bring small amounts of vaccine in uh, to those rural areas where there's 20, 30, 50, or 100 veterans. Uh, I believe we're going to need to have that kind of creativity and innovation in order to deliver this effectively and quickly. The last question very quickly is internet access, you know, telehealth, all that's been hard to come by in rural areas because we have no internet service. And then also getting reimbursement for travel. That's been a big thing with our veterans in rural areas. Has that been looked into and how they can basically be able to access that or expedite that as far as access to the travel expenses? Uh, let me answer the first portion of that, sure. uh, the internet. Uh, there is, uh, there is really some weaknesses in the internet system in America. We're working on it. And we've been, uh, we've been trying hard. Uh, we worked uh, hard in Kansas with some of the small uh, providers to see what we could do to enhance that. It's been a pretty frustrating area, mm -hmm. uh, but we're hoping for the help from FCC to really work that and hoping for your help. And we have the COVID that. package coming. There's going to be more help for that, too, and it specific, specifically spells out in veterans how we can help them in the most vulnerable areas. How about on expenses? Is there another way since our internet's not 
uh, getting able to get their reimbursement or get their expenses? And, and yes, we are examining that, and I've been assured that uh, we've, we've put uh, methods in place to get people's reimbursement for travel in and to make sure that's being done properly. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, sir.